button. Hey, everybody. <laughs> it's me, Sue McGarvey. We're back uh, talking about sex, go figure. But today I have, I have the opportunity to interview somebody. I, I, you're in Tampa, right? Are you in Tampa, Central Florida, Daytona. somewhere? I'm based out of Daytona. Daytona. Oh, East, okay. Eastern Florida. This is uh, TJ, and he is the founder of Goodfellows, and he's one of the owners of the sharedwiveslifestyle.com, which is a new website that's launching. And uh, it is, it's an interesting model, right? You know, I, somebody asked me about lifestyle events, and I said, you know, they're great, but everybody thinks it's, there's you know, more money than God in it. And I said, there's a lot of people in it right now. I said, and, and the only time I think it's going, I think there's room for new people is if it's differentiated, if there's something new and you have a very interesting new angle. Do you want, and so you, you run this sort of this group where there's single men in the lifestyle, which people think is an oxymoron, but there really are room for single men in the lifestyle. Is that true? That is very true. Tell me yeah. about that. So, so um, the, the idea with single men being in the lifestyle has, has been like, the guys are coming in and they're not bringing anything to the table, so to speak. So, so a lot of husbands, when they see single men, they're like, well, who did you bring? Why do you just think that you can have my, my, my wife or my partner? And so, so when you say that the lifestyle, I look at it from the, sing, the, the swinging lifestyle, the single men have not been very well received because mm -hmm. they're not bringing anything. They're just taking the, uh, experience from that or, or being able to share a person's wife. And, and the husband is not getting any real benefit from that interaction because I didn't bring anything to the table. Yeah. And, and, and from a female point of view, I got to tell you, it always offends me. You know, I am not chattel and it is not a quid pro quo, right? If you, if you don't have something to share, this is not a barter system. I am not right. something you barter. Yeah. So from a woman's point of view and, and anybody who doesn't believe that women runs the lifestyle are out of their mind because it's the women that make the decisions and the women that decide who, what, where, and the guys are all standing around looking at their feet if they women don't say yes. So the fact that that if the women are saying my fantasy is two men or my fantasy is you know five guys, I want to be airtight, whatever, um, those that idea of bringing single men in it, my the challenge has always been with single guys in the lifestyle. I call them the retrievers, right? The little puppies that go. <laughs> You know, they're all just like thinking with the little head and they're eager and they're just complete idiots. And you're like, I need you to be sane and I need you to be classy and I need you to be clean and I need you to have some game and I need you to start at my toes and work your way up. And here's the list. And most of those guys are going, baby, I got the equipment. That's all you need. And we're all just like, yeah, we don't, you know, we, we know in 15 minutes we can get that. What we want is smart, kind, funny, smells nice, clean, you know, has a sense of humor, knows what to do with it, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and so, so two points that you said on that. Um, you said women run the lifestyle, but but the same goes that she who rocks the cradle rules, rules the, world. the world. And yeah, so, so, so not only in the, in the lifestyle, if, if the men that are in this, um, they understand that she's the queen. And if we treat her as such, then she's going to be able to, to open any door that we want to have open and, and so understanding that, I understand, I understand that. And then on the second part of what you, what you said that, that resonated with me is the fact that um, I teach, teach gentlemen how to be gentlemen. Um, the first thing is first is respect. So, so yes, yeah, she's there with her, with her husband, but don't walk over her because I know she's beautiful. This is my comment. I know she's beautiful. I know you want to attack her, but meet the husband first and give him the opportunity to introduce you to his wife. And then, then you can move that on further. So, so, but I actually teach the men in my organization how to, to bring more to the table. I say to my guys that we're more than just what's between our legs. And, and, and so when, when they understand that, then they bring you a conversation that's not just about sex. Um, they can take, um, they can put life in the lifestyle and still have a, a great experience, whether we actually um, have an intimate encounter or not. It's still a, a great, great opportunity. Those are those are really great points. I uh, I call them McBain's. You know the guy from The Simpson with the flat top. You know it's, it's yep. if you're if you're at I, I remember being at a convention where I was speaking, and I had my partner with me, and somebody approached me and immediately gave him his back. So he's talking to my partner with his back. It was not three seconds, and I started to laugh, going, "Dude, you got no chance because yep. you have just pissed off." Like in three seconds, you're done. You're a I don't care what you look like, who you are, what you think you have. 
you have just disrespected who I'm with. Right. And you don't know who he is to me. You don't know how that is, but you have not, you know, you've not done that dynamic. And the piece around, you know, understanding that, that, that for a lot of people, and I, I teach a non-monogamy class and I say to them, look, if you have a, if you have a, a discussion or you go for dinner with another couple and nothing happens, is that a bad night? And they're all like, hell yes. I've only got one Saturday night. Yes. If I don't get, you know, if I don't get action and I'm like, wrong answer. Yeah. I'm telling you the women, if you don't, you know, cause again, if they feel safe and comfortable and guys don't get this, you know, you're a big guy. You don't get that. The most important thing we're worried about is our physical safety. Right. So yeah. if we don't feel safe with you, it doesn't matter how cute you are. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, you're hung to your knees. It matters about how safe we feel and, and that piece. So I think that's great. So you must interview, I don't know how many guys to get, you know, get the sort of stable that you have of, of hundreds, classy guys. Hundreds of guys. Hundreds of guys. I, okay. I, I constantly have conversations with them and, and, um, and teach them about etiquette and um, not just, just um, about every aspect of the lifestyle. As far as, especially if you want to be successful in this, um, you have to bring more to than just your cock. Now, there are those size queens out there who really don't care um, if he can talk to me or whatever. And, and I don't want those type of guys. I want the guys that, and even the couples, I weed out the couples because I want the couples that want to actually understand that the guys that come to this table are gentlemen. I mean, don't just walk up to me and just grab my cock. I'm a gentleman first. You know, let's talk. Hey, my name is TJ, you know. Uh, so mm -hmm. that, that goes both ways. Absolutely. Well, I just think it, if, if you're looking at that, it, it gets really, it gets old really fast, right? right. I said sex, sex you can get, right? The woman, you know, you can get sex, yeah. sex with integrity, sex with somebody who actually sees you beyond a hole, you know, is, is, you know, I always say is, is worth its weight in gold. And that is the, the part about the integrity. Yeah. So it's, it's great that you're talking to them. And, and again, I, I would say that you have to, you know, one in 30 guys I would meet. It, you know, when I go to conventions would get it um, and to be at a point now, I know there was a number of books written by men in the lifestyle, a single man and saying, how do you do it? And this idea that it's, it's a free for all and it can be, but if you're at a point in your life where you are realizing you don't want to be monogamous, this, this process for you is an interesting step. So how does shared lifestyle, shared wives lifestyle work? How do you, how do you, you know, what's the process? Well, well the, the biggest process that, that we go to is understanding that um, this couple is actually sharing their their intimacy with this individual. And so so from that perspective, you look at it and you come into to, to the idea that this is this is a union that they have. I'm not coming into this union to try to disrupt it. I'm only trying to add to it. Um, and so so when we bring this mindset to the table, uh, well, let me just take it back. I started my journey hosting hot wife events where the events were female empowered and all the women would come and, and they're like, the guys aren't talking to me. I said, yeah, they'll introduce themselves, but ultimately it's your choice. This is your own personal party. So you make the decision, you make the rules. And, and so, and they like that idea where they were in control. And so when over the years, what I've been building toward is the shared wife lifestyle. I just hadn't labeled it yet. In, in that sense. And so what the shared wife lifestyle has, you have three different types of couples that you encounter. You have a hot wife couple where the wife has the green light um, to choose to be with a man, whether her husband is present or not. They have that agreement or that understanding that she has that, she can do it. She's a hot, she's very attractive and she can just do that. And, and when I say a hot wife, it doesn't specifically mean a certain look or a certain size or anything like that because in every man's eyes, his wife is a hot wife, regardless of who she is or where she's at, or she's a, not a supermodel or she is a supermodel. Mm -hmm. She's the apple of my eye. So to me, she's a hot wife. So when they come to the table, these are the people that we talk to and that, that we inter that, that we're interested in. And so then, so you have your hot wife, you know, your hot wife couples. Um, then you also have your cocktail couple, couple where, where they have a specific niche that they want or maybe something. Okay, different. so we're going to stop because there's going to be okay. people that don't get that. Cuckolding, for people who don't get the definition, okay. is somebody whose fantasy is to, it's, it's usually about power exchange. It's usually exactly. about feminine domination where the male, of you know, your, your husband, your partner is, you know, submissive and he gets his kink fed by you having a bull or another male partner in the relationship that lets him be either belittled 
or minimized or watching or whatever the, whatever the rules are. And you ask a hundred different people about their kink, you get a hundred different answers. Same with a lifestyle. But as a rule, cuck holding means, and it comes from the, you know, the, you, you basically the bird laying the, the egg in another bird's nest and that bird looks after it. It's saying that you're going to get somebody in to look after your wife and you're going to be essentially minimized in the process because there's a lot of people that doesn't that don't get it. So there is a good, what, a good third of your your members, TJ, yep. are, are involved in that? Are involved in that. Yep, yep, yep. You know, you know as... As a sex therapist, I certainly see it a lot in in my practice, you know, with my patients. But it's it's, you know, it's certainly part of the kinky world, and it's this idea that, and it's if you you know if you go on Pornhub, it's a whole category. And if that's of interest to you, because there's for a lot of people having their seeing their partner with somebody else. My experience, it goes one of two ways: either you're really jealous, you don't want to be your partner with anybody, or it's the complete turn on. Show me the video. I want movies. And those are the couples that come to you who want to yes, see exactly. because it's super exactly. open and you want to see your wife with somebody she finds attractive and having a great time. Yep. Or this, as you said, the cuck holding piece where they want to be, they the, the wife is just part, of, it's part of the domination for the, of the, of the husband. Degradation, humiliation, denial. Um, these, okay. are, these are some things that that, that um, the cockhold couples. Now, the, the cockhold spectrum is very broad, so there's not real one definition on cockholding. But the couples that that we we look at are denial, um, degradation, um, and mm-hmm. there's different, different things that come with that. And, and, mm-hmm. and those couples, there's a place for them. You know, there's a place for them for them in the shared wife lifestyle. And 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 that's what some one of the things that we bring to the table. Um, okay. we'll, we'll cater to that particular fetish. Okay, so so those are the only sort of the two groups. No, or there's a there, group. um, third the group. group. Well, there's probably two more groups. The other group is the stag and vixen. Um, a lot of people don't talk about the stags and vixens. So when we talk about the power exchange uh, with the stag and vixen, um, both parties, the husband and wife, have that same power. Whereas the, the wife can um, participate with another male, but the husband can also participate and join in in her pleasure. And so mm-hmm. so rather than him just being on the sideline in a hot wife situation watching. And, and, and getting excited or in a cop holding situation where he's being humili- humiliated in a stack conviction environment, the husband is there and he's participating. There's no, um, he's not submissive. He's an alpha male in, his same, in the same right, but he's also sharing his wife and, and she ultimately has a control, but um, he's sharing his wife with another male and they both are inter- interacting with her in, in that shared environment. He can take pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she's, she's decided she wants two men equally because in, in some you know, when you're talking about, about sexuality, whether it's, it's consent, but a lot of times force, if it's not a power exchange, it's about equality. So if you're, if, you know, right. you're right. If right. both couples, if this, this is a true threesome in yeah. terms of, except that in this case, the, usually the, the man that comes and joins it isn't, are not bisexual. They're just sharing the wife. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, in, in the cockholding situation, um, you may have that. You may have yeah. that. And there may be some hints of that in a stag and vixen couple, but, um, so, so it just depends on, on the couple. You'll, you'll, I mean, I can see it when I talk to them. Um, so I know the different aspects of what they want. And if the husband wants to participate, maybe orally by, um, this mm-hmm. is something that they communicate with me. Um, and I'll say, oh, so you may be more in the cock holding, but he'll say, I know I'm not a cock hold. Okay, so you can be a stag and vixen and still want to participate in her pleasure. And if her pleasure is she likes to see you with another man or, or sucking another male's cock, then that's also part of that that shared environment in the stack and fix situation. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, and the, in the last one would be, you know, truly the, last one is the single females, um, single females. Okay. Them, um, from the equation, because they're part of this, this whole experience, just because they don't have a partner. Um, they're safe when they come to my events in the sense that um, I make them feel that way. And I let them have the experience that they want to experience because um, again, they're empowered. And um, they just want to make sure that they're safe. And my thing is, I want to make you safe. This is not just a unicorn, which is a single woman that will have sex with couples. This is a a single woman who will have sex with your individual men or join a couple or, you know, or or how... Or, yeah. or they want a gangbang, you know, they want. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, unicorns can eat, unicorns can eat wherever they want. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, okay. So that sounds like, so that's the, so you said you've had a number of events. Can you tell me about those? Well, it, it, well, I was part of um, Splash Mocha, which is an event special, specifically designed for hot white couples. And mm-hmm. uh, what that did is, is it brought men of color because the, the niche 
or the, the change in the climate of the lifestyle was couples wanted to see that the BBC, the Bulls, the interracial aspects of it. Um, mm -hmm. And so, so the Splash Local was a huge success. But um, during this hibernation period that we've had, I, I said, mm -hmm. you know, what, what I've been doing is a shared wife experience, but I want to be all inclusive. And, and so in, the, in, in being inclusive is we have a variety of, of single men. So when you see, hear the name of a bull, you don't automatically assume that it's just a, a black male. There's also Caucasian males and Hispanic mm -hmm. males that fit the, the, the description of a bull. And so, so we, we have that in this organization. And then so, so here, it's a safe fight for all men, you know, even, even want to be couples. I mean, I, I've encountered single white males and, and Hispanic males. I want to go to an event or I want to watch, I want to experience what it's like to see someone being cuckolded or, or a hot wife being shared. But we would say, well, you need to bring a girl. And, and so then for me, I'm saying, wait, I'm doing the same thing that swimmers do. So then let me be inclusive. So you can come to this event. You can be a part of this event. You can understand and see and feel all these things that a husband would feel at our event because um, the inclusion, we want to include everybody. Right. As, as, long, as long as you're classy and carry yourself well, and you're not going to be, you know, you're not, you're not going to be predatory, then you, is it, you pre-screen everybody and they're welcome. And, and okay. that's what I tell them. Um, anybody can be accepted as long as you're respectful, professional, gentleman, first and foremost, then, then we welcome you into the community. Okay. So you mentioned, you touched on the, you know, the hibernation that we've been part of. Um, and, and I think it brings me to a point about, you know, at this particular time where we're, you know, I'm doing everything by Zoom because we can't be together. You know, and I know there was, you know, there's an article yesterday. I, I, I remember having a drink with Bob from Naughty New Orleans yeah. at, at Secrets. I was drink, I had a drink with him at, in March, um, you know, at, at Secrets and, you know, talking about Naughty New Orleans before it all went to, you know, hell in a handbasket. But it's, it's, but he, you know, he hit, he hit, you know, NBC News yesterday right. that they had, they were a super spreader event that he had 300 of his anticipated 2,500 people arrive in, in New Orleans and they still have over 60 infections from it, you know, with five people in hospital. Right. Like, so how do you, you know, obviously we're going to have to be safe about this. So as I said, so this point is just, just launching the website and having a chance to connect with people without having the events at this point. Is that fair? Education with, with Zoom, having Zoom educational classes on, on the shared white lifestyle. Um, and, and trying to make sure everybody stays safe, but also actually really trying to lean on this virtual environment and this virtual world or community to, to try to keep this, keep it going for people. Okay. Yeah. And I, I, I said, I'm living it too. So I get it. Okay. So cool. I just wanted to, you know, I know that that people, there's a lot of people who are really scared. So I know that if I don't touch on that, that's, that's yeah. important for people. Yeah. So if people were saying, look, I'm interested and I know so I talked, I talked to the suburban housewives cause I'm somebody's sister and we do this and we talk about it. And it makes it a safe place for them. But if, if you've got a guy who's trying to entice his wife, who, who you know, every time they have this hot black waiter, she's biting her bottom lip and, and they go home and they fantasize about it. And he's like, how will we take this further? How would you get started? How would you, what's your advice for, for couples like that? I actually have a couple that, that I've been talking with like that for years. She's the reluctant housewife. He wants this so much and he knows that she really will enjoy it. And she's like, no baby. We took vows. This is important to me, you know. And, and so when I talk to them and I talk to him, I say, hey, you really need to, to lean off of being so aggressive with your approach. And, and, you know, we as men, we get pouty. She won't do it my way, so I'm not going to talk to her. But I was actually making sure that he caters to her emotion, her needs, and, and let her wrap her mind around the, the, the idea of being shared. Because, I mean, the first thing I, I can only imagine, hey, hey, I want to I want to share you with another man. I want to see you with another man. It's like, okay. To the woman, what am I not enough for you? Uh, what have you cheated on me? You know, all these questions arise in her mind. And so um, having that conversation with her and, and, and when I talk about the safe space, it has to be a safe space for him or and a safe space for her. Because I, I uh, when I, with my first marriage, I said to my wife, hey, I saw a guy I thought you would really like. She said, what? And I was like, oh, wait a minute, this is not safe. I don't want to go down this path with her. And so, yeah. so um, the, the key I tell them is, is create that safe space and that environment where you have that pillow talk time, where you can actually talk about fantasy. I mean, she she may have fantasy, she just don't divulge because of um, the security. Um, she likes mm -hmm. what she has, her family, and, and she don't want to jeopardize that. So, and I let him know that these are things that she's thinking about. 
Um, and so, so you can't force that issue on her. Allow her an opportunity to to embrace it. Um, an easy thing that I say is have have the conversation. If you can be with any man, um, whether it's a, a, a professional athlete or someone we know, who was it? If you had a hall pass, and and if she says, oh, well, if I could, and you wouldn't be upset, well, Johnny, okay, so what is it about Johnny? Because um, because if she knows that you're you're safe as a man, that you're not going to try to hold that against her. Um, in my mind and, and in my experience is that she'll be she'll open up because for you women, us as men, we want our wives to be a, a virgin when we marry her and we want her to be this I'm the only one and I'm the best she's ever had and so so we try to say so we we go into that so women go into that thinking that marriage get their white their, their knight in shining armor and, and live happily ever after and so they sacrifice their own sexual needs and desires because of of their home, and that, and I get that. But then, um, in the interim, they sacrifice so much sexuality uh, because this is the only person that they've ever been with, and they don't really know what 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 they can experience. And so, for those couples, I I let them know that you know it has to be a safe environment. They have to be a safe space to have the conversation, and and you can't just say, hey, I wanna I wanna share you with another guy. Um, put up some 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 scenarios so that she can wrap her mind around it um, because. There are more thinkers as women than, than we as men. We just act. Um, and so so as far as giving her time to process what you're asking and, and, and weigh out, you know, well, if I do this, is he going to use this against me later? Or is he going to, uh, you know, what is he mm-hmm. going to do to me? And so um, creating that safe environment for her is, is the, the most important thing when you're having this conversation. And then and then just, just talking it. Um, you'll find, I, I know for me from talking with other couples that, you'll find that women have a past. They just don't want to share it with you because we as men, we can't handle it. We can't handle it if, your, if your wife says, oh, I've had threesomes before I met you. What? You know, we, we don't understand it, but we want that. But um, women don't share that with us because of they're not safe. We don't make them safe for that. We don't mm-hmm. that. Yeah, yeah. Safe, safe is absolutely critical. And it's, it's, I tell people you have to talk about it a few hundred thousand times yes. and, and dip a toe in and talk about it and dip a toe in and talk about it and figure out where you're going, what you need and what are the landlines that are going to potentially be there. And there are things, you know, you're, you're not thinking about. And, and I said, the guys are thinking with their little heads and the women are thinking, Oh my God, is it, you know, is it, is, you know, are there going to be condoms and, and can I get pregnant and what happens? And, you know, as, as, as you said, is it going to be used against me? And, you know, that there's a difference between fantasy and reality. And the reality is that maybe they're not excited about what that looks like. So, you know, I understand that that's a, that's, that's a process and that's a piece. And, and we need to find a way to, to enable um, those conversations because it's, it's what I know is that it, it happens. It's coming up more and more. And that it doesn't go away. You must find that, right? That it, it's, it's the thing about the lifestyle is once you start, you, it doesn't, it's not that you don't, you can't stop because lots of people do when they have children or they need a break or whatever, but it stays in the back of your mind about, I really would like to try this. It doesn't magically go away. Yeah. Yep. So and, and during this hibernation, one of the things that I've been doing is actually teaching these type of concepts as far as either, whether it's to a husband or whether it's to single men, um, and even now I'm getting contacted by women to say, how do I cock hold my husband? I'm like, OK, so that's different. He's not talking about it. She's talking about it. This is something that she wants to do. And so um, it all starts with education in the, in the spectrum of the swinging spectrum. It just throw you out there kind of in, in my mind. And, and so you're filling it out and learning how you do it as you go. And so um, on the job training. And so with, with the shared wife lifestyle, the, the idea is to educate people on the many facets of of wife sharing and so that they can have amazing experiences out of it. And it all starts with education and and understanding and then becoming aware, you know, becoming aware of of yourself um, and especially female empowerment. Um, Once once we as men understand that, that um, a happy wife is a happy life or she who rocks the cradle runs the world. um, If we make her as comfortable as possible with anything that we present to her uh, and feel safe that, more than likely she may may um, follow through with uh, giving you your fantasy. Maybe it may be one time or or it may be a hundred times. It just depends on you creating that safe space and that safe environment for her. Yep. 
and and for her to have an opportunity to talk about it and that's right and again it's 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 because again it's not going away people are keep coming up and they have this opportunity they've been looking at the porn or they've been fantasizing about it or they've been reading about your stuff and and again finding a way to to get started so sharedwiveslifestyle.com is about to launch you know at the end of this year as i understand yep. it that's correct and they'll have an opportunity to look at education and to find things and you know and 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 you know i know certainly as a therapist i have certainly done a lot of discussions with women who go, my husband is dying for this. What does this mean? How do I do it? What do I do? You know, it's, it's, it's femdom 101. Mm-hmm. And how does that feel? And to get your head around the fact that you can be a supportive, amazing wife and he can be a partner in the rest of his time. But in this role, you know, he's going to go sit in the corner and watch you get banged. And yeah not only not only be okay with it but absolutely feeds it and and certainly from a psychology point of view as i talk to people is the need the psychology of of men that men are raised by strong women they're punished and comforted by strong women and at some point they often need to be tuned up and it it fits it hits a deep seated psychological need and so when i when i talk to people about how fetishes start and how it evolves and saying look it is perfectly normal and if you can do it, he's not running off paying $300 an hour to the pro dom. So, you know, work on this, right? He's spending your holiday money yeah. doing that. Yeah. Why don't you play into that? Because it's, you know, in, in a monogamous, you know, and it doesn't have to be monogamous, but that in, in many ways is still considered, you know, a primary relationship and being able to add the piece to it. So how fun is that? So you have this new website, you have these events that'll, that'll run as soon as we can get the COVID vaccinations all done. And we're back to being safe and it's an opportunity for people to learn. So if you're a single guy and you said, look, I've been, I've been turned away at lifestyle events, or I used to be in a in the lifestyle with my previous partner, but I'm single now. And I really like to participate because I miss, because the lifestyle has the best people and, you know, and they're the kind and they're, you know, I like being nude and all of that. If they want to do that, do they send you, just send you an email and get, and get, you know, to they, go they, through the interview process? They contact me online or, or, um, a lot of times I get referrals from other couples and they're, they're saying, Hey, I, I was with this couple. They said, I really need to talk to you. So, um, so, so a lot of it is, is still in the virtual world. So when they reach out to me, I, um, I start my interview process and I, I start talking to them about um, different scenarios, different situations. But um, the main focus of the conversation is on, are you a gentleman first and foremost? Because um, at the end of the day, that's that, that man's wife. And, uh, you know, that's their their um, unique union. And so can you respect their boundaries and, and, and you know, kind of put yours aside for a while and, and experience that with, with, with this couple? Yeah, I, I, I think I think it's great. Like I'm 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 all keen. I'm thinking you need to have, you know, again, you have a whole list of of people of guys that get it, because usually the, the question is, is there there's not a man that will jump as high or run as fast as one in quest of an orgasm. So if you can, as you said, defer it and put her needs first and you know she coming first is is you know how it has to work then that's great and I know I you know I was telling a couple of girlfriends today that I was having this interview with you and they're like man that's the list we want right the guys guys who get it and and you know you don't have to spell it out that they immediately take the high road on that and guys who get it are 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 you know, they're not rarer than hen's teeth, but they are worth their weight in gold. Yeah. So you have you have a whole stable of guys who get it yeah. and you're able to, you know, help market that to couples who want to do this with integrity. Is that fair? Exactly. exactly. That's fair. Yeah. And, right. and my, 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 my major brand that I started this on is under the Goodfellas. Um, and the Goodfellas have been hosting these events. And um, even even now we have an event scheduled for September of 2021 in France at Capda. Um, oh, this yeah. is our second event second time going there and um, the unique groundbreaking thing that the Goodfellas have done is that we're hosting an event at Babylon and okay. Babylon has never allowed single males to be in there. Um, they had to be a company. And so right. for them to open their doors to the Goodfellas and say, Hey, you have the keys, you can host an event. And it's a, it's a, it's a shared wife event where um, couples can singles can come and meet um, single men that are respectful gentlemen, first and foremost. Okay. Well, I, I've, I've been to Cap Dag and I, I, I know, I know the scenario and, and yeah. you're right. It's, they have the cameras at the door and, and if you're not with, you're not with a couple, yeah. even as a tag along, you don't get in. So I, yeah. I, that's interesting. So, so September, 2021 sounds like fun. 
And I think, uh, I think it's going to be an interesting, it's an interesting role and an interesting niche that you have developed for, for that. If, if, I mean, if you had one thing to say to, you know, to people who are, you know, who are still on the fence about this, you're going to be seeing this, who are just like, oh man, I'm nervous. I don't know. I don't know if I can bring it up. How would, you know, what, what would you, what would you say to them is, is in terms Learning of doing about it? I mean, it's not what you see on, on porn. Um, the, the porn industry has really done some disservice to swinging and even the shared white lifestyle experience because you get that false sense of what is going to happen. But the main thing is, is communication. Um, I think for me, hearing couples say we talk so much more now that we're actually in a shared wife environment that, that than we did before because now everything is on the table. And so um, just having that communication. Communication is the, the, the groundwork and, and especially for the couple um, that's so important. So um, if I, I could add anything, that's what I would add. Perfect. TJ, you have been charming and, and you let, you, you know, I was, I was told that you were, you're quite smooth and you're quite articulate and you have been both of those things. So thank you so much thank for helping us. Shared, sharedwiveslifestyle.com. People can figure it out and uh, we can hopefully uh, have a chance to talk with you another time. So It'll you have a great day. Here.